What's up YouTube? This is Dennis Panuta and I'm Yannick Leismann for Tutorials.eu and in this video we want to give you a few recommendations via an interview format where we're going to give you some tips on how to get started as a C-Sharp developer, if you are a C-Sharp developer already, how to get to the next level and in general the learning path that we would recommend and the options that you have as a C-Sharp developer. So I'd say let's get started with the first question and yeah, that would be how would you recommend a beginner to get started? So if I would have no prior programming experience, so really at a zero level, so if I would never have written down any line of code, and I really think that C-sharp is a great option here as a programming language. First of all, there are other very, for sure, uh, um, popular programming languages too, such as Python or JavaScript. But C-sharp is very nice because you have a very clearly defined learning path and progressing path because um, there are well a lot of jobs out there which really require a couple of frameworks and they all come really great together in combination with C sharp so what I did back in the days was like uh, I took a lot of books and I learned and wrote some codes on my own I created some games using unity because it's really nice that you can well create games and see the visual effect of your code that you're writing down which is a great way to understand how code is working in my opinion and um, I also did a lot of exercises and programming tasks so I googled for uh, what, um, what applications can I build with a C Sharp for getting better at it and all of that so I started out with books nowadays I would go ahead and take video courses for sure I mean we are creating them right but they are actually pretty good and if you have the correct instructor which gives, uh, gives you the in-depth knowledge that you need to know then you're making progress way quicker that's really important so yeah basically I would say the key to success here is to really understand the fundamentals of the programming language itself which is mostly the same for every programming language out there so C sharp uh, C++, C and Python, JavaScript and nearly all of them right so you need to learn about functions or methods variables, if statements, so logical programming, right? And once you have that done, it's really up to you to make some practice in it. So go ahead and develop some applications. And it really doesn't matter how easy they are or how complex they are. It's about you to really use your brain and start thinking as a programmer. So you need to learn how to think as a problem solver. That's it, basically. Yeah, a problem solver. That's a, a very good point. As a developer, that's basically what you are. Basically, yeah. <laughs> the beauty about it is, once you become a problem solver, the next things, whatever you're going to do in the future, are going to get so much easier because you don't see the problem as a big issue anymore, but more like a little challenge that you can fix and that you can beat, so to speak. It's really cool. And uh, the example that you brought with the projects that you are recommending to build, uh, actually, we have a video on that as well. So I created a video back uh, where we had five ideas for C Sharp developers, how to well, improve your skills by, by building these applications, but at the same time, also some ideas uh, that you can use to progress to the next level. Okay, so the next one would be, would you say that, um, yeah, somebody needs to go to university to get started as a developer, to get a job as a developer? Yeah, I really feel like there are a lot of people out there who really have that in mind, like, do I need to go to university? Do I have to study? Um, to become a good programmer or to find a job. I think it's mostly about that last part. It's not, okay, do I need to study to become a programmer? It's not really the question. The question is, am I good enough to get a job in the end? And it's not up to any, well, any sort of studying or something like that. People out there who are employing software engineers who are searching for software developers, they are only interested in your skills and in your portfolio because that's the only thing that matters. Right? If you're just good in your school and you go to a good college and you study computer science, but in the end you're not able to make it and you're not, good, not a good programmer because you missed that step which I earlier mentioned about logical thinking, then you're not a good program at all. It doesn't really matter if you have studied at a specific uh, college or something like that. So it's really about the actual skill set and that's very, very important. Yes, there are, well, other people out there or other employers who say we need to have someone studied. That's definitely true. Uh, it's uh, well, to be more specific, most of them are really like uh, university 
owned company, something like that, where you work in the field of science. So re true computer science, right? They mostly require real university background. But I mean, if you want to work as a programmer, nearly all of the jobs out there are for agencies, for huge companies like Google, Facebook and all of that. And mostly or most of them will be your local companies, your local smaller companies for infrastructure, for uh, logistics or logistics, um, for yeah, what's, what's also a lot of stuff, agencies. Most of them are agencies. And that's, that's a good point because they really have a lot of different projects where you can work on and that's a great start. So yeah, basically I would say you don't have to study and it should not be your goal and you don't have to think about that too much. Instead, you should only focus about the moment where you go to an employee or you have a call nowadays on that on Zoom or whatever and he asks you, please show me what you have done so far. Because in most interviews, you will have a senior developer who is also there and he will take a look at your code, he will take a look at your projects. There is nothing you have to worry about, right? Senior programmers are most likely to be very, very, well, they really feel how you feel as a junior programmer or as a beginner. So there's no way to worry. They really know, okay, programming takes years to really uh, become good at it, to become a master in it, right? Don't worry too much about studying. Take care of building your portfolio with really specific applications that you need for that job. All right. Yeah. And you did that, right? You yeah. didn't go to I, university. No, I did not. Yeah. I by myself, I really thought about that a lot of times. So this is personally why I feel that so much because I always had that concern like, oh man, I'm not good enough to, to become a true programmer, to work as a developer at uh, big companies and, and whatever. Right. But all of this was just very, very wrong. So. Over the years, a lot of people and co-workers told me that I'm a really fast logical thinker and problem solver. And there are people out there who can code way better than me. But for companies, I was incredibly useful because I was able to develop solutions very, very fast. And well, yeah, that was one of my biggest skill sets. And um, people just love that. And everyone has such a thing, right? Maybe your thing is you want to be the best of it. Other ones maybe want to be the fastest, so I can develop fast. Other ones want to develop very, very good and in detail. For example, if you're looking for a job for an agency, you want to work in an agency, developing things fast and clean is an awesome skill set. If you work in an agency and you're a slow developer, you might want to go into a company where they have their own business solution, right? So this is what you can think about it, for example. Yeah. All right. All right. So then... Um Let's say you know the basics. So you learned what you just said earlier, yep. methods or functions. You learned object-oriented programming, if statements, logical uh, programming and so forth. What is the next step? What do you need to learn next? And we're talking about C-sharp mainly here, right? So yeah. this recommendation that you will give is probably going to be fitting for many uh, other yeah. fields as well, but we're focusing on the C-sharp field here. You need to think about what you want to do afterwards. I think this is the main goal. Like for every goal in your life, you need to think about what you want to achieve. And if you're interested, for example, in web development, which is the very, very huge and common field, which I recommend for nearly every new programmer out there because there are so many jobs and you're most likely to get employed. Well, so after learning the basics, make sure that you have a goal, right? So do you want to become a game developer? Do you want to become a web developer? Or would you mind creating web applications, right? Do you want to write um, you know, or program machines? For example, this is also um, possible mobile applications. So a lot of them are for sure possible and there are tons of frameworks out there for mobile applications. You could use MAUI, which is quite new. You could use Xamarin. And yeah, you could even go ahead and just build the backend part using c -sharp and use something completely different for the front end part, such as Angular, for example. So my advice, if you know the basics of c -sharp programming, don't spend too much time on learning the really in-depth details of that programming language, right? There is there is like threading and asynchronous programming and all of that and you can really get lost in all of that as a programmer. But in your first scenario, it's not really required. For sure, it would be awesome if you would know how asynchronous programming is working. And yes, we also have videos on that for sure. And you should not skip that, so don't get me wrong. I'm just talking about priority. So your priority should be learn the C-Sharp basics and if you have done that, specify yourself. So think about what you want to do 
and then search the correct framework for that. So if you want to build mobile uh, desktop applications, you want to use WPF or MAUI for example. If you want to build mobile applications, you could use Xamarin or you could, as I said, just build the backend part, maybe the, the REST API, which is lying on a web server, for example, in C Sharp. But then you should also learn any kind of front end framework, which you can use to build the actual application, which could be Android or Kotlin, right? Now, if you are a C Sharp programmer, and I know we have a lot of subscribers who are at a not, not even beginner level, they are even, well, they are going to advance in that direction. So they know the basics of C-sharp programming, but they maybe feel like lost and they don't really know how to move on from that point. Go into fields of web development. I cannot recommend this more. Go into the fields of web development. There are so many jobs out there. I mean, everything is going, going to the cloud. Everything is going online since years. It will not stop, to be honest. And you really want to be there. And you have a lot of options. So if you go ahead and search for C-Sharp jobs, you will see that there are definitely a lot of job offers out there which are targeting ASP.NET Core because that is the main framework that you want to learn for C-Sharp web development. And once you took a look at ASP.NET Core, make sure that you learn an easy junior front-end framework which is Angular, React or Vue.js. Take one of them. They are all pretty easy. We have a huge Angular video which is popping up right now. So check that out. We also have a video for sure on ASP.NET Core, but I guess you already know that. So this is definitely the desired path. ASP.NET Core is for a little bit more experienced programmers, but it's absolutely worth digging into it. So take your time, learn it because the effort you spend on it will definitely pay off. It's really interesting to to hear you say, well, uh, the, basically praise ASP.NET so much yeah. because considering that you have built your own MMORPG right. all by yourself, yeah. building it in Unity yeah. and like really loving the, the way of building mm. this insane application. But at the same time, it just didn't bring you any money, right? You didn't yeah. get a job in there. Like it was super hard to get a job yeah. there, right? Yeah, that's that's true. I mean, game development is like, it's very passionate and that's the good thing and the bad, the bad thing about it, right? So back in 2019, just to get a little bit more into that story, I just decided to build an, an online game, which was like an MMORPG. So really a big stuff consisting of uh, a web server, database, uh, and then all the Unity stuff, right? So the entire front end stuff, so animations, game design, game programming, so the real actual gameplay programming and all of that. And it took like 3000 hours and all of that with the intention to really make a living from it, right? Yeah. And even though the game in the end had a lot of positive ratings on Steam, so I'm talking not about 10 or 20, I'm talking about a couple of hundred, even maybe a thousand nowadays, right? I haven't checked it for a while now because I actually, well, stopped developing on that because it didn't pay off. Uh, it took a lot of a lot of time and I actually made money with it, so don't get me wrong, it, it paid a little bit off, right? But it was not enough for me to say, I take it to the next level to, well, scale everything up. So I decided to, well, okay, I let that game be what it is. It was tons of fun to develop it. I made nice kind of money, but that's it then for now. And I will go over and switch to the easy way uh, to be or to continue as a uh, web developer, full stack developer in my own agency. And it was, in comparison, it was peanuts. It's absolutely peanuts because like creating a successful game in comparison to finding a job as a programmer is, you cannot compare it. Yeah. You can simply not compare it yet. Yeah. Yeah. And then you had your agency for a while, right? And, yeah. and worked as an ASP.NET developer. Mm -hmm. And yeah, now you sold your, your project, right? Yeah, in the end I decided like, okay, I will not let that game die, right? Yeah. So I decided to just search for an investor or for a company which takes over the game which was successful. So in the end, as I said, it paid off quite well. So this is great. <laughs> yeah, so everyone who's out there who wants to learn how to write, uh, how to create games, don't stop because of this, right? So do it. It's, as I said, it's a lot of passion driven. So mm. um, don't think that you will make the big money because there, is, there are a lot of competitors out there. But if you love what you do, go ahead, continue on that. You have a real chance. You just need to learn about game marketing. That's the mm. biggest point I can tell about this. Yeah. Maybe yeah. we should make a video on that too. I think we need to have a separate video <laughs> yeah. just on that. Yeah. yeah. Because the problem really is that um, whenever you are trying to be successful with your own project, marketing and sales are going to be essential. It's yeah. just, it's so important. It's really yeah. the key. All right. So let's go over to the next step. So 
now that you have the skills of ASP.NET developer and you have the basics of uh, Angular, for example, down, so what's the next step? How do you get a job now? Yeah, so as I said, that scenario where you are sending out your requests for being interviewed as in a company or, as I said, you want to apply to a job as a programmer, you cannot come uh, and bring nothing to the table, right? You have to have something in your hand to show the person. It could be hosted on GitHub. It could be a PDF format, including screenshots. It could be a live hosted application or whatever. However, you need to prove that you have the skill that you are, well, uh, showing in your portfolio. If you write down your you know, C Sharp, Python, JavaScript, uh, TypeScript, and any other programming language I'm missing now, people will not hire you because just because you can uh, write code doesn't mean that you understood that you know how to solve a real use case or how to build a real use case. So C Sharp itself is not really useful, right? In the, in the actual company world, in the real world where you build applications, you need to have a framework. So this is why we said you come, for example, with C Sharp, maybe JavaScript a little bit, and you have Angular and then even also ASP.NET Core, which is amazing. People, or the employee will see that and will say, oh, that's a nice skill, it's a default skill set for a C-Shop developer, which is quite good. And um, then you want to bring something to the table and that should be in that scenario, like a RESTful API that you have developed in ASP.NET Core, for example, and maybe a front-end application that you created in, um, in Angular, maybe you even have done a step forward or an additional step and connected both of them together to build a full stack application. That would be incredible. Even if you are targeting for a junior level to position as a developer and you bring a full stack application, so front end and back and connect it, uh, people love to see that because like full stack development is even more specified for or is targeting uh, senior developers, right? So learning ASP gives you an incredible boost, as I said earlier. Yeah, and you, you want to show that to them. And in addition to that, if you, really, if you really want to increase your chances, you maybe have some open source projects on your GitHub. People love to see that because of the open source aspect, especially if you have an experienced programmer sitting in front of you. If you have more of a business person, then he will more focus on the point of what can you bring to our company? How can you, well, increase our value? Yeah, in, in the end, it's a company. Uh, decision right so you really have to offer value to the company and that's the most important point for sure you have to be valuable as a programmer and if you watch our videos uh, if you have watched them frequently you will know have noticed that I also mentioned it in nearly every video right I, I say like increase your market value as a programmer one last thing and that's a little bit of self-promotion um, I wanted to tell you a little bit about our 21 day challenge which is a uh, well, a product that is very different to all of our courses uh, that we've created. So, and that's where we came up with the 21 day challenge. And uh, we sat together and thought about what would be the general structure of such a 21 day challenge, well, how we call it, right? And what are the requirements? What, how long should it take every day and so forth? So can you tell a little bit more about it? Yeah, I can, I can. I mean, it, I worked on it so long so i can could i think i could spend like 10 videos only talking about that challenge but let me let me keep that short so basically you have noticed over this video that i said the important part is to build a specific skill set so learn a specific stack right a technology stack such as angular and asp uh, angular yeah angular and asp and then is my goal in this scenario was like, okay, how can we bring more value or how can we deliver more value to you, right? So how can we get more out of our courses? How can we make it more valuable for you? And we decided to change uh, for the 21 day challenge to change the focus, the actual goal. You will not learn a framework. You will also do that. But the goal is not to learn a specific programming language or framework. The goal is to make you job ready. And with job ready, what we actually mean is, in the end, you will have learned a complete stack and you have a portfolio application. So in the end, you have your bundle and you can take it and you can bring it to the, uh, to the table. This is basically what the, uh, what the 21 day challenge is doing. And to be a little bit more specific, um, so you should have some prior C-Shop knowledge, but you don't have to cover the in-depth stuff, right? So you only need 
uh, like methods and classes. So as I said earlier, C Sharp Basics. And then uh, we will go into that 21 day challenge and we will start off by learning some sort of Angular. So take a look at TypeScript and then we start building a small Angular application. Um, and after creating it, so after a short amount of time, we immediately switch over to the ASP side where we will set up a real ASP.NET environment and build a RESTful application. And then we will switch, uh, we will have tasks and we will switch the entire time between Angular and ASP so that we go ahead and say, okay, we need to add like a functionality to book a flight, for example. We will design that in Angular. We will build the front end for that. We will write the code for it. We will use Swagger and OpenAPI to connect it to our RESTful API. Then we switch over and build the actual backend part and even connect it to a database and all of that so that we in the end have a completely connected application consisting of Angular and um, ASP.NET Core. Yeah, and what we will do in detail is we will build a complete flight booking portal. And well, that's absolutely an amazing application. As I said, it took us months to develop this course and our focus was to give you um, the details and the depth that you need to get a job, not less and not more. The focus really, I cannot say this more, the focus is to get you in a job and whatever course you're finding out there, I promise that today, I promise you will not find a course which is more valuable to you than this one if you are a C-sharp programmer and you want to find a job or you want to really get better in your job and increase your value if you are already like a C-sharp developer but you want to move to web development for example. This is your way to go to get a job or to get paid more. Yeah, and we even had the, the first few uh, students that we had in there, they, we had uh, calls with them regularly to uh, see the progress and make um, changes if required to the 21 day challenge and uh, they were really hyped huh? Yeah, absolutely. Like, they, Absolutely. Yeah. So it's a really great product and I'm super happy about it. It took um, months to create it, right? So yeah. uh, not just that, it was not just uh, you who created it. You, we worked together with uh, Mosen, who is um, our well exper most experienced developer in the team. He has like 12 years of experience yeah. uh, in the .NET stack, right? And he really knows his stuff. He also prepared the test-driven development course that we have yeah. and, um, and, and then even the Angular course, right? So, and even the Angular. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so yeah. he's... He knows his uh, his things, and then he he helped create that course. So yeah. it's it's really like I, I call it course, but really it's a twenty one day challenge. The idea behind it is that you need um, twenty one days. If you set it up, well, if you finish it on a daily basis, you go through the tasks that you have each day. So each day, how how is each day structured? Yeah, each day we uh, we cover one specific topic. That's the main idea behind it, so that you come. To the course you spend the day learning something new and then you need to apply it on your own you have programming exercises inside of that challenge and you also have all the important information covered in nice looking pdf handouts right so we for sure want to deliver you as much value as possible yeah yeah and that on a daily basis basically so you really have like the knowledge first then you get some additional handouts and then you get, need to apply it and yeah. the application is where you're going to learn because just watching a course is not going to teach you anything right so obviously you're going to learn a little bit here and there and understand some words and so forth but the actual yeah. skill is acquired by um, yeah. by using it right yeah. i think it uh, we actually hit it on the head we had the right timing uh with with the whole interview so thanks a lot for watching it we really enjoyed doing it and i hope you also enjoyed watching it all the way to the end definitely make sure to check out the uh, 21 day challenge in the description below or you can also see an info card popping up right now so click on that check it out check if this is something for you and if you like it enroll in it you will not regret it as i said your fastest way to become a job as a programmer or to get job ready as a C Sharp developer. And for sure, if you like that format, if you like that sort of interviews, we have a lot of, a lot of topics to cover. And if you want to see one and you have an idea of, oh, please go ahead and talk about how can I increase my salary as a programmer or something else, just go ahead, write it down into the comments and we will make an interview because it's actually tons of fun, to be honest. So no. give us a thumb up if you like that because well, I actually moved here to record this video, right? So give a thumb up and uh, we hope to see you next time again for sure. All right. See you next time. Bye. Thanks. Bye.